Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Volvo S60. Most of the trouble with the S60 turned out to be with the transmission, more precisely with the gearboxes. The transmission itself is well configured here, has a large margin of safety, and the holdex clutch in the rear axle drive only requires regular oil changes every 30-60 thousand. For the rest, keep an eye on the shoes covers, carton shafts and the oil level in the gearboxes. There will be no big worries. In principle, up to 150,000 km, they often do not do any manipulations at all and nothing breaks. But the car was not very lucky with the boxes. Modern premium cars are offered only with automatic transmission and the Volvo S60 is no exception. Mechanics can be found only with the lowest power rate gasoline 1.6 and sometimes with diesel engines. Most fortunate are the multi-cylinder engines of the modular series, gasoline and diesel. With motors B5204 T8, B5204 T9, B5254 T12, B6304 T4, D5204 T3, D5244 T15. With well deserved inline 5s and 6s of Volvo design, they installed the battles tested automatic machine ISIN TF80 SC TF80 D. The only problem of which, after 1210, is too tight thermoregulation with the resource of the blocking lining of the gas turbine engine and the contamination of the well body. This allows us to consider it very resourceful but capricious to operating conditions. By the way, the thermal mode can be easily improved by installing a large external radiator and an external filter, for example from a third generation Honda CRV, which was often done on cars when the first signs of problems appeared or even immediately after purchase. Of course, a 6-speed gearbox is not at all cheap to repair if it comes to it, but in most cases it ends with cleaning and easy repair of the well body, replacing the gas, turbine lining and oil. Of the minuses, only relative lack of intelligence can be called. Diagnostics of this box with a scanner will not show everything. Here knowledge of construction and inter ingenuity is rather needed. And also an understanding of the intricacies of the work of hydraulics. Occasionally, in addition to overheating, the machine is threatened with antifreeze leakage in the ITF. Unfortunately, this problem is still relevant. In case of corrosion of the aluminum heat exchanger or destruction of the fittings as a result of mechanical stress, troubles are possible. So when buying, check the connection area of the box heat exchanger for leaks. This is a sure sign of impending high cost. Indeed, in this case, all the clutches will have to be replaced and the well body will be cleaned, which is tantamount to an automatic transmission overhaul. A typical resource with a standard cooling system before the first repairs is about 150,000 km. This usually requires replacing the two line pressure solenoids and the automatic transmission lock solenoid. Now they are on the sale separately from the well body plate, which reduces the cost of repairing such a malfunction several times. If the linings of the gas turbine engine are not worn out to the limit, then another hundred or even more thousand kilometers can be expected before serious intervention with the replacement of seals due to a drop in operating pressure. And with frequent oil changes and a more gentle thermal regime, the box can go through even more, which is clearly seen in the example of European cars with more than 400,000 mileage. Also, the box is very sensitive to wear of the Teflon oil rings in gaskets. Before diagnosing the weld body, it is imperative to check for the actual working pressure in the system. If the pressure is below normal with fully open linear solenoids, then usually it is not necessary to replace the oil pump. It is relatively reliable here. But to overhaul all packages with the replacement of seals. ICNTF ATSC is relatively well mastered in repair. Serious problems with it are solved quite successfully, although not 100%. But you can forget about budget repairs, the average price for a complete repair has not yet dropped below 150,000 rubles. This is box is one of the favorite cash cows of automatic transmission masters, along with ZF 5HP and 6HP, as well as AWTF 60. The situation is much worse with the Kitrack 6DCT450 robot. Such a box was installed on all versions of four-cylinder engines, even the most powerful 300 horsepower ones. Volvo didn't have the junior versions with dry clutches. The 6D CT450 had all batch clutches, and the engine had a simple and reliable flywheel. As with all pre-selectives, the gearbox provides excellent economy and shift in speed. But there are a few nuances. Like the Volkswagen robot DQ250, the old bed, a developed body, the mechanics and the clutch block is common here, which significantly increases their requirements for the purity of the oil and increases its dependence on the driving style. 
And alas, as was the case with Volkswagen DSJ, key trucks have a slightly underdeveloped design. An additional factor that greatly affects the operation of this particular automatic transmission is the too small gear ratio of the first gear, which means that its low adaptability to low speed modes on engines with insufficient thrust at low revolutions. S60 owners usually experience jerking when switching or loose of traction due to automatic transmission errors. The latter is usually associated with emergency overheating. What's going on with this box? In the vast majority of cases, high temperature and oil contamination with clutch where products are to blame. The main supplier of mud to oil at the initial stage is the clutch kit. It works with slip when starting the car and when driving at low speed. Also, slight slippage is used for smooth gear changes, but it is insignificant if the car doesn't drive 402 meters every day. Dirt from the oil must be filtered by two filters, an internal coarse filter with magnets and an external fine filter. The second is a replaceable element and doesn't require the assembly of the box for replacement. The oil is not completely filtered, brazo particles are constantly present in it, but if you change it in time, then there are relatively few of them and the wear of the remaining elements is slow. Over time, and especially with the increase in the degree of contamination of the oil, other parts of the box also begin to wear out. First of all, there are two line pressure solenoids. By the way, they are the same as on the Volkswagen DQ250 box. Flushing sometimes helps, but stemware usually means major repairs or replacement. Next, the shift forks suffer. They first wear out the brass sliding inserts and then the magnet of the fork itself may wear out. Of course, wear products from clutches, solenoids and forks go into the oil pump, which also wears out and supplies wear products to the system. If the coarse filter is clogged, then the operation of the box is disrupted even more. In advanced cases, the pressure is not enough, the well body malfunctions and large wear products already enter the system, which can damage the gear pairs and the differential. Wear is noticeably accelerated when the operating temperature of the automatic transmission rises. The standard cooling system works well only in the absence of constant overheating of the motor and in the absence of heavy loads. And the native thermostat, although it is designed for sparing 90 degrees, often fails. Lowering the operating temperature to 60-70 degrees usually doesn't harm much and in some cases it is even useful, but the temperature rise to 105-120 degrees already leads to rapid oil wear and leaks. In addition to the wear of the solenoids and oil seals and the entire plastic of the automatic transmission, the oil itself corny begins to burn in the clutches, where the temperatures can be noticeably higher than that of the oil in the crankcase and the peak values of all temperatures in the crankcase go beyond 150 degrees, the oil becomes more fluid. The emerging slippage of the clutches, in turn, leads to even more wear and tear and even more heating, finishing the box quickly and with a guarantee. In principle, the resource of the set of clutches is quite large. With careful handling of the gas pedal, following the pattern of working with manual transmissions and the absence of races during operation, they are almost eternal. There are cars with an original set and a mileage of over 300,000, and in a taxi the mileage of cars with diesel engines exceeds half a million. The key to success is not only an oil change, but also the health of the electronics and speed sensors. They need to be changed sometimes. This is how it happens in Europe. But here everything is much worse. In Russia they sin with cold starts when the clutches, due to the viscous oil, slip more strongly and seize unevenly. Another catalyst for robot wear is traffic jams, in which drivers behave like with a classic automatic transmission. Well, you can finally finish off the box by driving on highways at a speed of 150 and above. For an average driver with a mileage of 150 to 100,000 km, the main clutch will already require replacement. If the oil was changed at least once every 45,000 km and the filter every 15,000, that is, at each maintenance, and a box with solenoids of a new type, then most likely it will not have noticeably wear, but if the oil was not changed or the filter was changed along with the oil only at 60 and 120,000 mileage, then the wear will be very significant. Unfortunately, the description of the problems doesn't give a complete picture of what is happening. The new box design turned out to be poorly compatible with our services. They act at random, without understanding the process taking place in the box and knowing the design features. From this, the number, the number of problems only multiplies. Even a proprietary service often cannot solve the simplest problems associated with the initial stage of wear, damage to the line pressure solenoids, failures of the speed sensors and the progressive contamination of the coarse filter. The undertaking large-scale work with the replacement of everything in a row is more like a banal robbery of a client. 
Against this background, a new specialized services do not seek to reduce the average cost of repairs and their volume, although the likelihood of successful treatment in those is much higher. Average repair of only for this box is only in the range of 150,000 rubles. But a number of repair attempts without much success from a problematic image of the unit. Connoisseurs of the brand often call the latest generations of Volvo cars Fords. And not at all for the platform, it just doesn't strike the eye. But the replacement of the classic engines of the modular series and SI6 with Ford Equibost units and the new VEA Volvo engine architecture series offends connoisseurs. With all the advantages of the new engines, the old ones had a much greater margin of safety in their own special character, and history should be appreciated. On the second generation Volvo S60, real engines were used mainly until 1215, when the most powerful versions of four-cylinder engines appeared. Moreover, under the hood one could find both five-cylinder beloved by many and inline six in petrol and diesel versions. First of all, I will mention a feature of the engine cooling system. On all S62 engines, the intercooler is frontal and the main radiator and air conditioner condenser are assembled into a dense sandwich. One of the advantages of this solution is that the intercooler is quite cold during city traffic, even in traffic jams. But trying to make the radiators smaller and space them apart from the intercooler makes the system very susceptible to contamination. The sandwich is heavily clogged and the intercooler itself is located low, which is why its combs are not only dirty, but often also damaged by stones. It is imperative to put a mesh in the bumper. While well, you need to flush the radiators regularly, otherwise they will clog up entirely and only flushing with removal will help, which is usually very non-budgetary. Specialized Volvo services usually ask for from 10 to 15,000 rubles per operation, the rest can be persuaded for 5-10,000. Because according to standard hours, this is not such a costly event. Specialized compositions for cleaning aluminum and a good jet of compressed air in skillful hands and with the bumper removed are very helpful. The bulk of the dirt is not visible. A layer of dirt gets stuck between the condenser and the main radiator. The distance between them is about 1 cm and after this centimeter is tightly clogged with dirt and there is a decent layer of dirt behind the intercooler. You can just wet the outside, but it will hardly help. Contamination of the radiator package often becomes the starting point in damage to the automatic transmission and the engine. Wash them at least once a year. The Volvo modular engine series dates back to 1990 and the S62 was fitted with its latest variants until 2016. These reliable and original engines with a camshaft belt drive have earned the right to be called one of the best in the world. Yes, the latest options with the lightweight piston group and turbocharging can no longer boast of that limitless boost margin and resource. They easily nurture their 300 plus with normal maintenance. Yes, there is a belt and it needs to be changed. And besides, there are no hydraulic lifters and instead of the camshaft bed covers, there is an upper cylinder head cover, which will not allow checking the clearances in the field. Quite a whimsical crankcase ventilation system, and yes, actually there is almost nothing to complain about. Of course, turbocharging requires many engine systems to work perfectly. The motor doesn't like overheating, it can easily drive the cylinder head, the rings are covered with a guarantee, and a weak valve of guides, and a weak valve guides require a regular check on the oil seals. The turbocharged inline sixes of the SI6 series are somewhat newer than the modulars, but all the warm words can be attributed to them unless the timing chain on turbo engines pleased with its predictable resource. But the power is more than enough, the engine resource is excellent and there are tuning opportunities. But the inline force of Ford origin here produced an ambiguous impression. On the one hand, there were excellent motors, simple and cheap, with a very good design. On the other hand, they clearly do not withstand the degree of forcing that is incorporated in their last versions. Hence, there are numerous problems with the scuffing of the last cylinders, piston burnout, bushing scuffing and the early appearance of annular working. Doesn't contribute to the longevity of engines and the recommendation for the use of low viscosity oils as AE20 for its specification. The 1.6 liter engines will seem regularly familiar to all Ford Focus 2 owners. Volvo has a slightly brutalized version of them, with a capacity of 150 to 180 horsepower. Of course, supercharged direct injection and phase shifters. In addition, the motor also has a variable displacement vane oil pump, very capricious to the degree of oil contamination. Both engine options are extremely sensitive to overheating and oil pressure drops. 
it is necessary to monitor the cleanliness of the radiators, change the oil much more often than prescribed during active operation, and it is advisable to use at least SAE30 oil, and in summer at high temperatures SAE40. The slightest disturbance in the operation of the fuel equipment overheating bad oil, and now the pistons are burned out and the crankshaft lifts up. In the worst cases, the block is sent for disposal. And there can be a lot of reasons. A low-pressure gas pump may not supply the spheric pressure, fillers may become dirty, a high-pressure fuel pump may also create pulsations or under-supply pressure, radiators are regularly contaminated, and simply annealing after a plug can lead to a disastrous result. In general, the motors are not bad, but they require care when operating. The 1.5 liter engine is completely different. It has a chain drive of camshafts, it has less trouble with phase shifter couplings and a stronger cylinder block, it is less prone to overheating. But the rest of the problems are the same, and they are also associated with a very high degree of forcing. It nominally belongs to the new VAA series, but in fact it is an almost unchanged Ford engine, which can be found under the hood of half of European Fords. Engines with a volume of 2.0 liters are positioned as a, as a proprietary development of Volvo, but if you look closely, the VEA or E-Drive architecture is very similar to the Ford EcoBoost MI4 engines. In any case, the cylinder block is almost exactly the same, and the cylinder head is subtly reminiscent. And even the liners for the newest B4204 T7 fit perfectly from Mazda, and the crankshaft can be taken from them. So this is all the same Ford heritage, no matter how the company boasts of its independence and its developments. In general, Mazda L cylinder block was, can withstand power about 300 horsepower well, so there is nothing strange in the appearance of factory variants with such forcing. But one thing, a fan-made Mazda 6 MPS and quite another quite heavy and massive Volvo cars. And even on low viscosity oil with clogs, radiators and plugs. As a result, motors with a boost rate of 200-245 horsepower prove to be insufficiently reliable for everyday use. If it were not for the difficulties that followed them with cooking valves after hundreds of thousands of mileage and an unsuccessful control program with detonation on 95th gasoline, they could well prove themselves. Under normal temperature conditions, frequent oil changes and regular cleaning of the valves by supplying a detergent on the inlet, they behave well. And with operation on 98 gasoline and high quality oils with a viscosity higher than SAE30, they can still show a very decent piston group resource. In general, the design is quite successful, but very demanding for maintenance after 100 150,000 mileage and requiring a high culture of operation. Much more interesting are 306 and 367 horsepower motor options. In this case, a supercharger was also installed to help the turbocharger, the pressurization system was complicated, and the unit was further stranded. The result turned out to be quite extraordinary. On E85 fuel or good 89 gasoline, the engine even has a good resource, and the most complex system works reliably. But if there is a 95th in the tank, one good push on the gas may be enough for the pistons to burn out. Newer firmwares on this motor have solved one-click problem, but the design is in any case quite extreme, and an age-old car with such a motor would obviously not be easy to maintain. Surprisingly, the problems with the original Mazda L engines persisted. Here are the same features with leaks in the cooling system, leaks in the heat and oil exchanger, unsuccessful design of the thermostat and crankcase ventilation system, but so far all these troubles are in their infancy due to the irrelevantly small runs and the presence of much more serious troubles. Diesel engines are mainly represented by variants of the classic 5-cylinder D5204 engine, which has proven itself well in some special problems except for the classic diesel with fuel equipment. On this information about the problems of Volvo S60 is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.